Let's get started with blob storage by taking a look at this from the storage account perspective. First of all, we have our storage account, and you'll need one that supports blob storage. In addition, we have our containers, which are inside our storage account. This helps us organize our various blobs and images and you know, data files as we come across them. And finally, we have our blobs themselves, which go inside there. Now, you may be thinking, okay, what is a blob? You know, how is this different? Well, blob is a binary large object. Think of it as your ones and zeros. These could be images, video files, you know, random text files, or whatever they might be. But don't confuse them with files compared to like an SMB file share, for example, which, you know, has permissions and other things associated directly from a SIFS perspective. This is for storing large amounts of images, videos, etc. Now, if we look at the storage account types, we have three major types. We have GPV version 1, blob accounts, and GPV version 2. Now, GPV version 2 is the main choice you will use when you create storage accounts in Azure now because it allows us to do page blobs, block blobs, so we can do all of our you know, images, videos. We can also store VM disks in there as well. We can mix everything in a GPV2 account. GPV1 allowed us to store blobs and other disks as well, but a blob account was specific only for blob storage. And ultimately, it was confusing for everybody, so that's going away, and GPV2 accounts are ultimately the direction going forward. You may be asking then, okay, well, what is the difference between a block blob and a page blob? So a block blob, again, is ideal for storing text or binary files. Again, those are those images and video files. A single block blob can contain up to 50,000 blocks, of up to 100 meg each for a total size of 4.75 terabytes. So that's a single image ultimately could be 4.75 terabytes. Append blobs are also there and they're optimized for append operations, example for login. Now you may see that difference between you know blob creation and append blobs and, and that's just important from that perspective. Page blobs on the flip side, these are for read-write operations. Think of your VM disks here. Yeah, these are used by Azure VMs, and these can be up to 8 terabytes in size. Which leads us on to the next thing that we need to cover, which are storage tiers. You know, we've decided now that we want to use blob storage and store a bunch of images, but what's the right tier to go for? Well, the first one we look at is hot storage. This has our highest storage costs, but our lowest access costs. So think of this for frequently accessed images that we might be utilizing in our application or, you know, maybe website content, things like that, you know, accessed very periodically. Then we have cold storage. This has lower storage costs now, but higher access costs. And it is possible to move from cold to hot and hot to cold, as you'll see in some of the demos. But what you do incur is a storage cost penalty when you do that, because if you're moving from cold to hot, immediately you're going to pay those higher access costs for access in the cold storage as you move it to hot. So even though you can move them around, you know, it's best to aim to use the right tier of storage for your purpose. And if you look at cold, it's really intended for data that will remain cool for 30 days or more to be cost effective. Finally, we have archive storage as well. This has our lowest storage costs, but our highest retrieval costs. When a blob is in archive storage, it is offline, and so it cannot be read. And this is really because it's pushed off to tape or some other archive type storage that Microsoft uses on the back end. So if you decide you want to access something in archive storage, there is a period of time as that has to get rehydrated back so you can access it. Now, ultimately, just pick the right storage for your use case. And if you decide, okay, well, sometimes things go into hot storage and then eventually I want them to go to cold or eventually to archive, it is possible to enforce some auto tiering around this that will gradually move, you know, unaccessed blobs from hot, you know, down to cold, down to archive. And there's various automation techniques in Azure that allow this to take place. Finally, let's just take a look at the decision criteria as we try to choose between blobs, files, and disks. Often this gets very confusing. So if we break it down, blobs themselves, this is for storing large amounts of objects. Again, images, videos, etc. We might want to access them from anywhere. You know, just lots and lots of images, videos, text files, etc. that might be accessed. Then we've got files. So think of these as more from accessing from multiple machines, jump box scenarios. Maybe you've got a remote desktop that somebody wants to store a root user profile on. That's a good scenario. And then finally, we have disks. So these are really associated with our virtual machines attached to the operating system. Think of this for like lift and shift scenarios when we're moving from on-premises. We might be doing disk expansion for application installations, lots and lots of read writes. That's when we would ultimately use disks themselves. Now that concludes the overview and I encourage you to check out the subsequent demo, especially as we kind of build blob storage accounts and move images around. You'll get a lot of feel for everything that we've covered thus far.